So at this point, we're pretty much uh, done with drilling all the holes. I've got two more uh, holes to drill, which I figured since I showed the first two holes being drilled on the skin, I would go ahead and show the last two holes being drilled on the skin. So we'll go ahead and get these last two holes drilled then. And then one left. That one's actually sort of, you sort of blocked on that one by a Clico right there, but. But that actually almost pretty much completes it. There's actually two holes down here in the back that I actually forgot to drill into my wing skin over here so probably can't really get a good good view of that but down here in the far corner there so that'll complete the uh, drilling at this point everything looked pretty good I did use the camera for every part of, or for, for every hole I drilled just so I could keep uh, keep an eye on what was going on and how things were progressing and for the most part it looked pretty good. I did see a few holes that uh, that got a little close, but I'll see how close they really are once I get the skin pulled off. One thing I figured I would cover here just real quick is uh, some changes that I made to the camera setup. Now if you recall, originally I was using some uh, clamping, uh, clamping arms to hold the camera. As it turned out, that turned out to be a little too awkward to work with in the confined space. So what I wound up doing is uh, I used uh, grafting tape and just essentially just bound this onto the uh, onto my little selfie stick on the end, and that actually worked quite well. Uh, I mean, it's not going anywhere. I mean, between this and, and using things like a stretch wrap tape, actually, it, it makes it very easy to, to prototype stuff. Uh, very quickly just to sort of find out if something's going to work or not or for you know semi-temporary installation so you know especially like this grafting tape uh, inch and a half uh, you know it's turning out to be uh, quite useful to, to have around right, so at this point we've got the skin pulled on the wing and I've done an inspection of the holes and how they uh, came out as far as centering and on the whole they came out pretty good uh, just looking down here we can see that uh, this is the center line that I was shooting for and on most of these we came out pretty good. I uh, did have a few that were right on the edge. Uh, six millimeters is the closest that you want to have a rivet hole to an edge for an A5 rivet and uh, I had, had a couple that were just right on the line but for the most part uh, everything came out pretty good. There was uh, some drifting in some places but uh, still overall I'm satisfied with the results of what I'm seeing so far. One thing I would point out here real quick, one thing I did to try and ensure that the ribs were as straight as possible is I made a little bit of a, an alignment clamp to uh, be able to secure the ribs. And what that starts with is looking down here, I've got some 10-10-80-20 uh, uh, that I have anchored to the table here. And then for each of the ribs, I'm using a series of, of uh, clamps, basically uh, right angle, uh, uh, pieces of aluminum right angle that are attached to the 80-20 and then clamped to the, clamped to the rib uh, using, a, uh, using a side grip Clico. And I've got that set up on each one of these. And then on the back side, try and find a view that works here. On the back side, since I'm having to go through go through a flange, uh, so that I'm not putting pressure on the flange itself, I've got a, a little uh, uh, quarter inch piece of aluminum on, or piece of wood on the back side. I've used used a combination of both, and what that allowed me to do is is to uh, check the alignment 
of the rib and make sure that the rivet holes from the skin were landing exactly or landing where I was expecting them to. Uh, so on this side here, of course, you've got screws. I could loosen these up and uh, and be able to, to adjust this rib from side to side. So I'll just go into a few more details real quick as far as how I did the alignment. Now one of the things I did is I created a, an alignment strip and all that essentially is is a strip of aluminum. It's about four feet long and an inch wide and I do, drew a straight line on it. And on that straight line I punched a series of holes as you can, as you can see here and used that, those as my alignment points. So what I would do is, uh, is essentially adjust the rib so that when I've got this when I've got this clamped over it and of course I've got the the hole lined up on the center line here and on where the center line is on the rear channel then I can loosen these screws up uh, that are holding the holding the clamp down and be able to adjust this side to side now the other thing this allows me to do as well is I can do test fits with my wing skin and where I have my holes drilled at, I can also go in and see where the holes line up exactly. And that allows me to, to more finely tune the positioning of this rib. Now, of course, one of the things you sort of run into is, of course, you, is if you make your marks and then pull your wing skin, you know, how do you know how much you need to move? And the way that I got around this, got around this issue is, again, using, the, uh, uh, using this articulating arm clamp. Uh, that I've got set up just holding a ruler and then I could just take the take the clamp and just line it up over the location line it up over the over the location that I want to line want to align and then just take note of where the center line is versus what the hole is and then be able to to uh, uh, adjust the position of the of the rib from side to side to allow me to to get everything exactly where where I want it to be, and like I said, I found that that's uh, worked pretty work quite well. I mean, everything's pretty much dead on where I expected. In fact, I even knew of some places where I would have some some deviation because even in spite of uh, of trying to you know straighten these ribs out by adjusting the flutes after the ribs were fabricated, there's still a little bit of waviness. So you know, of course, using this gets you gets you most of the way there, but then you can do a little bit of additional fine tuning. Uh, the other advantage of having this type of uh, clamping set up is to uh, uh, is to help ensure that that this rib can't shift around any while you're while you're drilling in the holes. And uh, you know, one thing I definitely did not have any problems with, even though I checked every uh, hole with my my camera that I was uh, having that I had pointed underneath the uh, underneath the wing while I was doing my drilling. Uh, you know, had absolutely no problems with shifting. So I was definitely glad to see that. So as far as the, the other parts of the construction uh, of this, uh, again, it, uh, since this is a 12 foot long wing, it's, uh, it took two pieces of, of a 6 foot long 80-20. And then, of course, you have to have one end anchored. And then on the other end, uh, you know, it could, it could hang freely. Uh, the only other thing that I would probably mention here is, again, these lab jacks come in handy. Uh, for being able to sort of uh, fine-tune the position. In this case, I had a lab jack plus I had a, uh, uh, what, a, a 246 block underneath here, and I was able to fine-tune this to be able to, to get this perfect, you know, get this level, get this level both in the center, and then also I've, I've got a similar setup on the ends. So this is all I'll currently cover as far as the attachment of the left wing skin. The next step on, on uh, constructing this is I still haven't, uh, permanently riveted in <coughs> the uh, uh, permanently riveted in the ribs uh, to the uh, to the spar in the rear channel. So that'll be the next step. Which hopefully that'll be fairly straightforward without any surprises because everything's already been drilled in. So hopefully that'll be a, a, a relatively quick process. And then after that, I'll have to uh, I have to start thinking about uh, being able to flip this wing over so I can get the bottom skin attached and riveted on which probably what I'll do in that case is I'll do something similar to uh, what I did for the center is that I'm going to construct two more of these posts to be able to lift the wing up and uh, and be able to flip it over since again I've, I've got a this is something sort of need to do solo I mean yeah it obviously be a little bit more convenient to to have somebody else but for my situation I think it would work a lot easier <clears throat> just being able to uh, 
to be able to, to flip this thing on my own. Plus, on top of that, uh, of course, if I've got the, the ability to flip it, then I've also, once everything is completely done, have the have the ability to to move the wing into its uh, into its cradle, uh, so I can start working on the other wing. So that's all I'll cover for now on this. And if anyone's got any questions, feel free to ask. So as you can see down here a little bit, and I'll provide a little better view later, you can see some plastic wrap right there. That's essentially grafting tape that I've used to, to temporarily lash the camera onto the selfie stick. So like I said, just wanted to show the show the full extension over here of the of the camera pretty much all the way almost to the almost to the wing. And like I said, getting getting uh, getting pretty close to getting this done.